follow the Sports Coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Section of Brandon Silvers, man, a real peer pocket passer. I'm glad this dude uh, chose us over the Eagles. He had an invitation to go to the Super Bowl championship, but he wanted to come to the Saints, put in that work. A hometown kid from Orange Beach, Alabama, man, 70% completion rate over the career passing. Uh, 70, 71 touchdowns, 29 interceptions, um, 10,000 passing yards over four years. Pretty good, pretty good for uh, 6 3. 219 pound kid out of Alabama, about two hours away from us, hometown kid, homegrown. Uh, really looks like someone who could put the ball pretty much anywhere from the pocket. Not a lot of mobility, but I'm excited to see him there too. And I think we have a real fierce quarterback competition and a competition all around the board with all these undrafted free agents in our draft. So we looking good. Big Q, what you think, bro? I think that's a pretty good assessment. Uh, DC uh, well said. Uh, it'll be the best QB competition we've seen in some time, perhaps. Of course, we know Drew Brees is obviously the, Drew Brees the starter. Drew Brees is Teddy behinds up on but the it, trick passes. But it's, but right. It's going to be a battle behind him to see, you know, you know, probably the Saints might practice squad one of these guys. They got a lot of young, capable guys here, man. And uh, it's not going to be a cakewalk for Tom Savage, so he better have his football in hand and he have his football in savage. Mind. Right. He better do it because <laughs> well, this other kid. Mark Ingram must uh, become cause, savage. Because Taysom Hill pretty much has solidified the spot because not only he just holds the clipboards, but he's on special teams making tackles. So he's kind of played into that dynamic of not just being somebody holding the clipboard. Anyway, let's move into some of our other topics in this segment. We're going to finish out before we head out. And let's hit this one, DC. The weakest spot left. On our team, post-draft, post-free agency period, post-college free agent signings, what would be your assessment as the weakest position left? And, of course, y'all guys out there, comment. Please comment. Uh, give us some interaction on this topic. Tell us who you believe is the weakest spot. DC, who do you believe is the weakest spot on our team left? Fullback. Um, we basically got Zach Line and who else? I think some other guy. Uh, they're, they're okay. I really would have liked us to get that kid from Oklahoma, but um, we didn't. So, I mean, we basically plugged all, all our holes, in my opinion, as far as depth, and I, I feel like we have an impact player on every level of our defense and our offense. Um, you can go down the list. Um, some positions we have several impact players. So the only weakness I can think of is fullback. <laughs> yeah, I would have to I, – I don't know if I, I'll add the – Fullback in there, but I mean, at first I was thinking they didn't do anything to address the tight end position to after the draft, and I'm kind of so curious. Pro- prospects I showed you, I seen those signed. guys yelled at. Like three of them, one of them might turn into something. Right, yeah, and I and I, I could see that because we have a lot of the established guys right here. They own one year contracts left, and and perhaps the Saints won't get a little bit more versatile. But Yelda and the other guy, Shereen. Shring, whatever his name is, those guys Lake are real, Florida, right? They're real intriguing, and they have that big old tight end come up there from Minnesota, six foot eight, two hundred and eighty pounds, damn near an offensive lineman. You know, it'll be interesting to see what these guys could do. But you know, I, my call would be tight end, you know, based upon that. But all right, let's move into the next topic, and we're gonna talk about the NFC South outlook. Of course, the Saints wasn't the only the only other team to make upgrades on their teams. You know, coming into it. Atlanta, of course, had an interesting draft. They got Kelvin Ridley, 26 overall in the first round. Second round, they got another cornerback, Isaiah Oliver, out of Colorado to help out with their secondary. Third round, they got uh, Dedron Sanat, a defensive tackle to replace Dentarius Poe, another running back. In the fourth round, behind those splendid two running backs, they got Ito Smith out of Southern Miss. And then a six-round draft pick, they were able to take Russell Gage, our former LSU Tiger guy, and of course in the sixth round, Foy Olakun for a linebacker from Yale, who's probably just a depth uh, special team sign, perhaps a special teams guy. Um, 
you know, DC, looking at Tampa Bay running down these, and then, of course, we'll just bounce it back and then give our, our, our takes. Tampa Bay, first round, Vita Vey, big old defensive tackle, sits right next to Gerald McCoy. Very interesting. Ronald Jones out of USC in the next round. They had two uh, second round, look like they had three uh, second round picks. Uh, MJ Stewart, the cornerback out of North Carolina. Carlton Davis, Carlton Davis, the cornerback from Auburn. In the third round, they got Alex Copper, offensive guard for Humboldt State. Round four, they got Jordan Whitehead, a safety out of Pittsburgh. Fifth round, Justin Watson, wide receiver from Penn. Uh, and in the sixth round, Jack Cicci, linebacker for Wisconsin. And then, of course, the Carolina Panthers did themselves well in the draft. They've got DJ Moore out of Maryland in the first round. Second round, Dante Jackson, the cornerback from LSU. Round three, Rashawn Golden, safety from Tennessee. Tennessee. Round four, Ian Thomas from Indiana. And then also in the fourth, they got Marquise Haynes, an edge rusher from Mississippi. Round five, Jermaine Carter, linebacker from Maryland. And, of course, the team was able to get two second-round guys, Andre Smith, the linebacker from North Carolina, and Kendrick Norton, big defensive tackle from Miami. Now, that is some of – those are all of the draft picks for our NFC South foes. Now, D.C., let's get into this for a few minutes before we bounce to our final topic. But whom – out of all these picks that I just named out who you believe, and of course you guys interact with us as well to tell you, tell us who you think uh, have got a serious upgrade to give the Saints some opportunity. Because I think, and I'm not just saying this because well, I'm a Saints fan, DC, I think that the Saints are legitimate uh, Super Bowl contenders. A lot of people feel that way. In NFC South, who's going to be the biggest hurdle uh, based upon uh, what we see here? Um, Now... You got to take in consideration what I'm saying. It'll be the biggest hurdle for the Saints within the division just based on playing them. Um, we got a lot of good teams. Atlanta can be a playoff team again. Uh, so can Carolina. But I honestly think the biggest hurdle for the Saints in the division rivalry is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay had an excellent draft. Um, they got V to V. To pair alongside a Gerald McCoy, who already gives us headaches, and they have Jason Pierre-Paul Jason Pierre Paul already there on offense. Curry, they, don't forget Curry they got from Philly. Yeah, and Van, Van Curry, I almost forgot about him. Um, the hole they had on offense was running back. They got Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones fits well with. with Very, and then they got the other guy they had from last year to add him with him. Right, and Peyton Barber. So yeah, Tampa Bay looks formidable. Very, very good running back there. And then they got a bunch of other guys to fill out their roster. They got a decent cornerback out of Auburn, too. I actually like that guy. Um, they had a very excellent draft, and they made key free agent acquisitions. But um, a close second, I would have to say Atlanta. I think the impact of Calvin Ridley wow. is going to be astronomical. Two Alabama wide receivers. To pair that up with Muhammad Sanu, and, yeah. uh, you know, that's headaches for any team, not yeah. just us. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A lot of people say Atlanta. They like Kelvin Ridley plugging Tampa next Bay gonna to. Tampa be the sleep. I'm telling you, man. Uh, people are to, uh, sleeping on Tampa Bay. They, I mean, they don't Jones. think Jason Pierre Paul V to V and Gerald McCoy and Vinnie Curry going. That ain't nothing. That's a new terrible. That ain't nothing to sleep on. That's that, a man. new. That's a new terrible line. Now. You got to run screens all day. That's going to be. That's, that's <laughs> going to be the Tampa Bay is is definitely something I was looking at when they had that draft. And the things they did in free agency. And they drafted good too. They they filled filled most of all of their holes in this draft right. on the offensive line, especially the, the on the defense the only thing they, and cornerback wise. Now you mentioned Carlton Davis, but coach. MJ Stewart from North Carolina is a game or two. But yeah, go ahead. You're saying uh, the coach is the problem. Yeah, the only thing holding Tampa Bay back that I, I think will stop them from exceeding is their coach. I'm, I'm not sold on him. Uh, last year, their team basically mentally malfunctioned after that game with us. And um, they weren't able to recover from that. And I think they're going to come back this year. I mean, don't think you're going to get the same team you got last year against these people. Them people are going to be pissed when they play us. Yeah, I we, think it's going to be a very hard for a game. And they did beat us, I believe, the second time they played us last year. So um, Tampa Bay has always been a hard team for the Saints to play. And I think uh, this year it ain't going to be no different. It'll probably be a little harder than usual. Yes, uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. We're going to look at it uh, as well. Uh, people... Please interact with us. Give us your commentary. Hit the, the, the comment section up. Tell us who you believe will be the biggest hurdle we for the Saints in the NFC Atlanta. South. So, Atlanta, of course, Atlanta, 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 Atlanta done some stuff. Atlanta, but, Atlanta. hey, man, don't sleep on Tampa. And Carolina, too, got Atlanta some weapons for Cam, Joe, uh, Cam Newton. So, 
But let's move into the next topic. And they lost. They lost their D tackle, so their they defense may not be as potent. Even though I think it still be good. Right. Let's move into the next topic, and that's the top 100 came out uh, a few days ago and listed a few Saints very, very. I don't know to say high or low. But not right. Let's put it to low, you like that. Low, low, low. They had the, the top 100 came out and listed uh, cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, rookie of the year, as 82. That's the NFL Network's ranking. 82 on the list. And they revealed Michael Thomas, who appeared on the list at 81. Now, Marshawn Lattimore played in 13 games. He had 52 tackles, led the Saints in interception with five. He had 18 pass defenses. He was voted the NFL Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year in December and the Rookie of the Week on four occasions. He's the top-rated cornerback and was selected selected to the 2018 Pro Bowl. So not only did he win the Rookie of the Year, but he was a Pro Bowler in his initial year as well. And, of course, we don't need to say too much about the ever-powerful Mike Thomas who continues to sin. Go watch the Minnesota Vikings games but, and see what he did to Xavier Rhodes. Right. Blocking two. Yeah, he punished. <laughs> I mean, he was Knock physical. Him out the game. Yeah, he did. He was pretty tough. But the question is, we look at it, this is not right here. You have Michael Thomas at 81 out of 100. And then you look at uh, Marshawn Lattimore's 82 out of 100. I hope for the sake of this 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 damn ranking that... It's voted by the players now. Yeah, well, the players... is is, is, is some hate going on with the players. <laughs> Dude, stop hating. Y'all need to stop hating, man. Y'all know y'all, most of y'all out there ain't as good as Mike Thomas or as good as this kid Lattimore. And I know a lot of them old veterans never made a Pro Bowl. No, no. Right. Pro- some of them even got three interceptions in one season. <laughs> Stop hating and get a man his due diligence. To have them way up there in the eighties, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, you know what? And then when it comes out, you're gonna see how ri- how ridiculously stupid it is, and they might as well throw it out if they're not gonna keep it real. Yeah, but what's def- your take on that? Quick, it definitely should be higher than the eighties. Um, I think by Marshawn being a rookie, you know, you know, you gotta kind of like uh, get scared back. That's how they feel. But you can't hide Alvin Kamara. So when I see where they put Alvin Kamara, that's going to show the real hate. It's gonna be if, in he the fall, if he fall in the 70s or the 60s, then you, man, you stop. get rid of this. Look, man, all to y'all NFL players out there, stop hating, man. <laughs> Give them people they do. Give what do you think due. they should belong? They should be in the top, at least in the top 30. At least in the top 30. Ain't too many wide receivers played better than uh, Thomas last year. Bottom line. True. So there we go. But anyway, that's the end of the show. Thank y'all for listening to the Sports Combo with Big Q and the Guy. And as always, if you enjoy the show, you can give us some support by going to patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Make a donation uh, to help build a platform. Or join our social media pages at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. For me in D.C., peace.